There have been a lot of things that have happened since I first uploaded on YouTube back in 2018, both to me personally, as I'm now the father of two kids, which is weird to even think about sometimes, but also globally. And I still am having trouble realizing that we are currently in a pandemic and we have been for so long. And now the current conflict and war that's been raging in Europe over the past almost two weeks. I'm not one to get political, and as you guys know, if you follow the channel either here or on Twitch or in Discord, I like to keep this a place where people can come and chill out, take their mind off things, and just game, or talk, or both. It's nice to have a place where people can just not think about the real world and have an escape, because I don't have to tell you that over the past two years, there have been some times where I really just wish I could have woken up and been like, wow, so that was all just a crazy dream, right? Well, let me just say that if the entire world and the Taliban also agree on something, then it's probably not okay. And what's going on with the war in Ukraine is something absolutely abhorrent. It's unthinkable, and in my lifetime I haven't seen such a careless waste for life, which as a father now, I've learned is just so very precious. It's insane what's happening, and I've had a lot of people over the past few days come into streams and say things like, Hey, why shouldn't OWI just remove the Russian faction from the game as a way to show solidarity for Ukraine? And that's just such a weird take for me. It's a video game, and obviously there's some very real things happening in the world that video games can relate to if you play them, but at the end of the day, it's a video game. This isn't real, and playing as a Russian in squad isn't condoning what's going on in the real world, just as much as playing as an insurgent on an IED bike in squad isn't condoning what happens in the real world either. I'm not saying these things are equal, but hey, the US has been at war in the Middle East for like 20 years and the US and insurgents are still in the game, right? Should we just have removed them too and just kept nobody in squad and instead of fighting over capture flags and shooting each other, we just walked over to the middle points and played Uno or something? Obviously not, but this is different. This war feels different and I think everyone sees that. And instead of removing things from games and censoring and whitewashing, I wanted to bring attention to a really interesting mod someone shared with me the other day called the Democratic Opposition Forces for Squad. This mod is made by Baron Von Boyce, who is extremely active in the squad and modding community, so you probably recognize his name from maps like Panjwai, Goose Bay, or even the Canadian faction as a whole. But the Democratic Opposition Forces is a mod that draws a lot of obvious influence from the Ukrainian military. It's very important here that obviously there is influence and obviously it looks fairly similar, but this isn't the Ukrainian military mod. This isn't Ukrainian army mod. This is democratic opposition forces. This isn't an endorsement of anything, but instead it's just a video game. And as gamers do, just as artists do or filmmakers do, this is just one way that we can play and enjoy something and perhaps take our minds off of something that's very real in the real world. I'll get into the actual details of the mod itself here in a sec, and y'all can see some really cool equipment and stuff, but I think it's important to mention that this mod will directly benefit Ukraine through Red Cross Ukraine. For every 1,000 subscribers to the mod, Baron will personally donate $50 up to a max of $500 to Red Cross Ukraine as a way to show support and help those in need. Not only are we able to play with some cool toys in-game and maybe give the Ukrainians a spotlight in-game where they can definitely shine, or should I say the democratic opposition forces, but we can also help give back and support people who really need it, all through gaming, all through our hobby, and by adding something to a game instead of taking something from a game. I have a link down below to subscribe to the mod. It's free, just click the subscribe button and the mod will automatically start downloading, and then you can also play the mod on any of the servers running it in game. But let's support both the creator and Ukrainians in this one and help spread the word. For the mod itself, it's an incredibly cool mix of Western and Eastern European equipment, which is to be expected. Basic rifles are AK-74s, while the soldiers themselves wear a mix of US multicam and old BDUs you might recognize from the Irregular Militia faction. But what I really love is seeing this camo on the Russian-style helmets with rigs and RPGs slung alongside. It's a really unique look, and it definitely feels like what we're currently seeing out in Ukraine. The rifles have a variety of Russian optics for their AKs, crewmen and pilots have M4s, and there are a few other kits that have the AKS 74 U's for closer combat, including a chonky 40 round variant, which is just awesome. One of these AKS 74 U kits is also the Raider class, which we would typically only see in militia or insurgents, and it also has a Scorpion as a sidearm, 
and a bunch of grenades to get really up close and personal with the enemy. What I also really like is that the squad leaders feel like squad leaders and that they actually have the grenade launcher attachments, mimicking fire team leaders in the real world army. Speaking of grenade launchers, there's even a grenadier class, but instead of grenades, it's simply a rifleman with an RPG and four frag rounds. <laughs> I absolutely love that. And it wouldn't be a fictional representation of the Ukrainian army without in-laws. So yes, of course, the heavy anti-tank class has one. Hat 1 has an in-law and RPG-26, with Hat 2 simply carrying the in-law itself. For vehicles, we have BMP-2s, BTRs, BRDMs, Ural trucks, and the HIP helicopter in a really cool digital camo. It's a nice, clean look, and although I liked these VIX before, the camo really just makes them that much better. Oh, and there's also a Humvee with a mounted Dishka and even a Saint Javelin decal on the side, which has quickly become a very well-known representation of those fighting the anti-air war over there. Overall, I think it's an incredibly well done and tastefully done mod. And I know some people are going to scoff at it and say, hey, it's too soon or it's inappropriate, but we're living in a world where we have video games made about current conflicts every single day, and we still play them without ever batting an eye. It's a game, and I personally am not able to go over and fight the good fight, so maybe enjoying this little piece of the squad universe and encouraging others to do so as well so we can raise some money for Red Cross Ukraine isn't that bad of an idea. But what do you guys think? Yay or nay on this mod? And if you do download it, please let me know since it would be great to see the numbers higher on this one. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Of course, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time. Until then, peace. I gotta get ready to push west. We're gonna be pushing west towards the attack mark here in a second. This is command all call signs. I have orders online. Stand by for more support on river fortification. Squad three, squad six, hold. Hold. Do you want smokes? You want explosive? Put HE on the ruins. Enemy helicopter disabled. Where? Scratch that. Observe mark. You got enemy running right to left. Yeah, I sniped oh. a, a tail rotor out of a helicopter. He's hit hard. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I see. I'm on the third. Yeah, that group of southern ruins there up there uh, for mortars. Yo, AT, can you hit this? Yeah, we got MG. Hit the hit the tail rotor as well. Oh, fuck. Nice, nice, nice. There you go. What? Good freaking nice. kill. Poor, poor man. <laughs> Uh, enemy hip destroyed over room court. Nice freaking kill.